News 4 Jack starts right now with a breaking news alert. And we have good news on the local breaking news alert. That missing eight-year-old girl from Durkeeville has been found safe. We just spoke with Elijah Bridges' grandmother moments ago. She says her granddaughter was staying over at a friend's house, and the friend's parents thought Elijah's parents knew. They hadn't seen her since yesterday afternoon. We know the child's family was desperate today. Her grandmother posted this over an hour ago. Lord, take me instead. Please, Lord, send her to us in the name of Jesus. Jim Piggott is going to join us in a moment. We just learned the mother and child have been reunited. He's going there now and has been touched with Elijah's grandmother. But first, we start with our crime expert, Ken Jefferson, joining us live from a police substation nearby. Ken, this is a relief. The system worked of putting this out to the public to get people's attention that something is wrong. The system did work, uh, Scott. And you know, as a former law enforcement officer, I've responded to many of these type of situations and the outcome isn't always pretty. It isn't always like this outcome, but this shows you the power of the media, social media, the community, and the police. When everybody works together for a common cause, a lot of times this is what happened for the common good. You have a great outcome such as this. Ken, we're, we're hearing there was a miscommunication on the little girl spent the night with a friend, didn't tell the parents. Perhaps there was nothing suspicious in police investigation. Maybe that's why they didn't go with an Amber Alert. Is that possible? Well, it didn't meet all the criteria for an Amber Alert, as, as we said earlier in the 10 o'clock. Uh, it just did not meet the criteria, and the police were very methodical in, in investigating it just to determine, to make that determination. They won't hesitate to issue an Amber Alert if it meets all of the criteria. Uh, but in this case, there was a miscommunication between uh, the, the, the two families, uh, but mainly the miscommunication with the 8-year-old. When you have an 8-year-old missing, um, and you report them the next day, that's a big miscommunication. So maybe they need to work on that so that this sort of thing won't happen again. But the police, the community, social media, the news media at large all worked together and, 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 and had a common good come out of this. Ken, and we had a lot of people questioning why was the little girl walking to the library? Was she alone? A lot of people speculating. We don't really know what happened. Is that something police are still going to, they're not just going to, bring the child home and call it good. They're going to speak with the parents, just kind of get the details of what happened, I assume? Yes, and that would be a concern of mine, that same concern um, if, if an eight-year-old is walking alone and then she doesn't show up at home. Is this a common practice? Is this something that happens on a regular basis that the parents are good with? Uh, or uh, did they panic? Did they not look at her? You know. Uh, or is this just a big mistake? We don't know at this, it's at this particular point, but police will probe into that just to make sure everything is, is, is good there with the parents as, as well as the child. Ken Jefferson, thank you again for your time tonight. Once again, we want to clarify, we don't know the details of how the little girl disappeared, but uh, she is safe right now, and that is the good news. And that is eight-year-old uh, Elijah Bridges there found safe. Her grandmother tells us she slept over at a friend's house, and the friend's parents thought Elijah's parents knew. So the, from what they're describing to us, it was a miscommunication.